because I'm a firm believer that uh, YouTube introductions are better when your mouth is full. It's the opposite of Grandma's house. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and this week we're going to talk about probably all kinds of stuff, but I will tell you two things that are going to happen in tonight's video that you might not be aware of because I just decided it right now. Item number one is that I will eat this donut because even though I love you guys and I'm here for you and I like to interact with you, I shall not be ruled by you. I refuse to allow you to dictate the decisions of my life. And because of that, thing number two that's going to happen in this video, normally we do a ridiculous dance when somebody does a super chat. I will not dance, so if you don't want to super chat and support us, that's fine, um, but I will not dance on this super chat. You can try and try all you want, it's not going to happen. It's because nobody texted me videos of themselves super chat dancing. My phone number is 412-925-1933. If you want to be in next week's video, or even this week's video, you could probably text in a super chat dance. Here, Jessica will babysit the phone. So if you guys want a super chat dance, you may. I will not. Try me. So. You have a bad day? <laughs> not really. I'm just feeling kind of snarky. I hope you guys are all right. Uh, what's up, everybody? We got Natalia's in here. Hey, Matthew. How you doing? Her panel forums is okay. Her, her panel forums. What is your real name? And comment on everything. All right. Hi, everyone. What's up, Wind Serpents? Deron is in here boycotting the super chat. Nobody can understand you. I don't care if they understand me. <laughs> this is about connectivity. Oh, look at this. Chris Carly Gear with the super chat. Chris, you know what this is? This is the world's smallest violin playing you a little sad song. That you don't get a super chat dance. That's what I'm going to do tonight. <laughs> Either text in. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I might have a super chat dance. Somebody started texting. All right. What happened with the Mochino Project? Did you not see the video on Instagram? The Mochino Project stinks. It is cursed. You cannot make an anery Mochino. And because that's the only type uh, I'm trying to make, do we have a super chat dance? Did you preview it? I didn't. Turn the volume down. Check it out. We <laughs> might have a super chat dance for one of you lucky super chatters tonight. Yeah, we. Um, so, the, for those of you guys that follow here, there we go. Yeah. We we only do two videos a week, and only one of them is a real video. If I'm in the intro eating a donut, it's not a real video. So, these are live videos where I can just kind of hang out with you guys. Answer questions that you post on the little communities tab every week. What do you guys want to know about? So that's what we're going to talk about, right, Jess? No. Oh, Jess isn't even going to read you videos now. <laughs> I'm not dancing. Questions. I'm not reading. <laughs> oh, man. Don't listen to her. She's going to read you questions because otherwise I don't know what I'm talking about for an hour. Um, but we are moving a lot of our behind-the-scenes stuff to IGTV. He has not watched it yet. Oh, Okay. Super chat, give him a Jody West over. Super chat dance for you. Wow, that's okay. This is good. This is why I have people text in. That was way better than my super chat dancing. I think we can. You do you guys comment below if you unanimously, I'm sure, agree. Super that chat. Whatever he just did. Oh, I don't have one. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> super chat, sad for you. World's smallest violin. Super Dad Day is not necessary. We have to name a Superdorf Snarky after our mood today. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. There's one that kind of reminds me of Jessica. Maybe we'll name that one Snarky. All yeah, right. You've already claimed that for tonight. Mm. Here's a Superdorf named Snarky. <laughs> right here. So. Oh, buddy. Um. Yeah, on IGTV, we're doing a lot of behind-the-scenes videos. So I dumped a clutch of eggs that went bad from a beautiful first-time uh, high-percentage super dark albino bred to our Mochino female, Chris. Um, basically, it's not just me either. It's a whole bunch of people in the industry have been trying to produce annery Mochinos. And after Herculean efforts, 
I have two. Um, one is the snow, you know, snow chino or anery snow chino. The other one is the golden child snow chino, which we have decided to name that combo the zombie snow. Um, super and chat. It, it turns out, oh, super chat for you, Matt Bernardin. <laughs> this is me playing you a sad song that you don't get to dance. Show me the box of donuts. Huh. It says, and send me the one. There you go. That's for you, buddy. We can probably figure out how to send you some donuts. I'll show you guys a, the zombie snake. Guess, do you want to read our first question? Chris, let me get you the zombie snake. Um, from Natalia, would you consider having your next intern train a snake following Lori's methods? I think it'd be very interesting to see it happen in real time. We could follow progress. And in my opinion, it'd be a great experience for an intern. Just a thought. That's a very good question. Um, so this is the what we're calling the zombie snow now. It basically is a Mochino Golden Child Annery. The colors here are hard to see, but jump over to IGTV and you'll see it. Basically, this snake looks like a deep bruise. It has like purples and greens coming out from underneath. And uh, it looks like you, you made a snow golden child and then you killed it a week ago. But for some reason, he's still moving and living. So, I mean, it literally looks like a snake. His color is like rotting from within. It's pretty crazy. So that coupled with, uh, coupled with the curse of how long and hard everyone's tried and how nobody's actually been able to produce these suckers. I mean, these are the very first ones, and it's been a long time. Um, because of that curse, we decided to call them the zombie snows with that and the way they look. So this is actually Olaf. You guys might remember we named Elsa and Olaf um, right here on our lives. So that's him. So Natalia is... Go ahead. We've gotten a whole bunch of votes for stonks already. <laughs> Get out. Stonks. I don't think it's going away <laughs> until you name one of your snakes. <laughs> this is me not also caring that you want to name my snake stonk. You didn't win. <laughs> Get over it. You're a bunch of sore losers. Um, so uh, Natalia is obviously referring to Lori Torini's. Uh, training stuff. If you haven't seen her, we share a lot of our videos on our YouTube page. Chat. Stonks. <laughs> Here you go, Chris. Wait, two for this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lori is awesome. She's a, a behavior anim uh, animal behavior specialist, and she has been training the snakes to do all kinds of stuff. Now, if you have a, a dwarf or super dwarf retic. Whether you realize it or not, you are training that snakes. What's up, Arctic Pythons? Thank you very much. I appreciate super your that? super chat. I do it not care that it's dancing. Yeah, he came with his own dance. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We love you and pre appreciate your support. Um, yeah, Lori does awesome stuff, and we actually donated one of our super doors to her program. She named him Tau Chetty. And you can see Tau, Tau Ceti. How do you pronounce that? C-E-T-I. She says it enough. I should remember. <laughs> anyway, um, jump on her channel. The stuff that she does with him is pretty amazing. So if you own one of these guys, you do train them. You know, you teach them when it's time to eat or you versus another person. No stonks. Please try again. Anna, thank you. Arctic Pythons. <laughs> For their super chat said, I don't care about your super chat dance. This is just for all the education I received through your videos and other people in the community. Much respect. Thank you. It's a 1999 super chat. I appreciate that. That that definitely helps us out. So it takes a lot of effort to put this stuff together. We got a cool one coming up Friday. And a Kevlin super chat. No stonks. Please try again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Um... But yeah, the, the snakes pick up on patterns. Seti. They learn things. Tal Seti. There you go. Perfect. Um, they they pick up on everything. So, you know, Summer, you're, you're talking about it. You've played around with Giles a little bit um, and, and that stuff. But they, they pick up on the trends. They pick up on the fashions. They realize if they exhibit certain behaviors, they get certain results. And then they work that in their benefit. And I mean, for the most part, they're sitting in a little box all day long figuring out 
how to make their life better with or without you. So they're going to make that happen, whether that means they want to escape their box and they're pushing all the time, or whether that means that they can be target trained where you, you know, you touch a target to something and then they go to that spot and they receive a reward. They're going to do that. So that's what Lori Torini does. You definitely need to check out her channel. The stuff that she is doing with these guys is awesome. And uh, even though she has mostly Morelia species, she has secretly confided in me that her super dwarf is their, her best star student and her favorite animal ever. I'm paraphrasing what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it is really cool. So to answer your question... Natalia, um, we have a new intern coming in. That that would be pretty fun. I think it would be kind of cool to take like one snake and try to train it to do stuff. We actually train every single one of our snakes as far as especially like hook training and stuff like that, petting them on the head, removing it. We did a whole training video with uh, Jess that was, was really more just helping the snakes to become confident around us, teaching and communicating to them that we are not, oh, we got a super chat dance for Natalia. So we need another super chat if you guys want to see Natalia dancing for us. Um, but uh, yeah, so we do a lot of hook training. And then they also learn, like Jess, you were noticing this, this the other day. They definitely learn like the differences between different people, like Rob cleans the cages <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, remember the snake that you had out the other day? And he was totally sweet with you and everything. Until Rob walked by. And then what did he do? They can sense Rob across the room. <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden, what, he became like... Super tense. Yeah, really tense, <laughs> you know, got all defensive and stuff like that. And I don't know, it's probably because poor Rob's always over there, like, you know, scrubbing them and stuff like that. It's not like he's out there <laughs> abusing our snakes or something, I don't think. So maybe we go watch some of the videos, <laughs> make sure. But um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, everyone is training them by the behaviors and things that you do. So if you're intentional about it, you can certainly make that happen. Um, one, one more thing to do. Oh, okay. Here it is. Super chat. We got a doggy super chat dance. <laughs> That's a pretty cute dance. <laughs> Thank you, Natalia. I received about half of that message earlier today, and I didn't have your numbers, your name saved. And I was like, who's sending me this dog eating a biscuit pic video? That was pretty funny. But, um, <laughs> yeah, okay, Duran's saying he, uh, he got quite a few dissenters on his target training videos. So you put up videos of your own target training on there, Duran, and people don't like you to do that with your own snake for some reason? That's interesting. Um... But yeah, so you you basically, I mean, when you when you handle the animal like this guy, he's having a very chill, very positive experience right now. It's a lot of fun, and he's learning just one more time that Garrett's chill and cool, and we can be friends and buddies. Even if I kind of manipulate him a little bit, move him around, embarrassingly kiss him on the head in front of all of you guys. Oh, Dad, you know how it goes. <laughs> I do. Um, but uh, not hurting him, so... One of the things just that you guys can do at home, and this is less of behavioral training but more of desensitizing them, is just touching them all over, especially any areas where they're sensitive, like on their face, on their heads. We even, I, I'll brush across their eyes, which their eyes are not open. They have like kind of permanently closed and fused eyelids. So I pet them there. Sometimes I'll even grab their lips, open their mouth, you know, and uh, do things like that. Pet them on their tails. And I just, I'm not very careful when I hold them, if you will. We don't want to hurt them, obviously, but I just kind of let them figure it out. And that way they learn that, you know, you could be a weirdo, but you're a nice weirdo and you're not trying to hurt them. And so they could be okay with that. And once you develop those relationships, they're great. And we were pulling eggs from Jesse, our, uh, our Kiowati Lavender Albino, the other day. And we'll have a video going up with that one on our IGTV as well. And she was just, it was a difficult egg pole she didn't want us to get the eggs but she wasn't striking or any of that contrasted to some of the egg pulling videos you see that are very like exciting and hyped up and don't get me wrong there's plenty of females that are very that will very aggressively defend their clutch of eggs from you but it doesn't have to be that way i think there's such a high volume of content that looks like that that people 
get a little freaked out when it comes time to pull a clutch. And maybe if you tried to, you know, do a get rich quick thing or something and grab a, an adult female and she has no clue who you are and all, the next thing you know you're taking her babies, that might be your experience. But if you get a nice baby like this, that's well acclimated and you work with them on training, you work with them on, on handling and, and you develop a trusting relationship, they're, they're great. They'll let you take the eggs, you know. And, and you have a lot of fun with it. We gave, we, if you watch the video that will go up soon with Jesse on IGTV, we took her eggs away, gave her a big kiss, and put them in the incubator. It was great. So, yeah. Oh, we got Reptile Revival in the house. They're MIA on uh, YouTube lately. So, uh, Anna died. was also had a comment about the training, asking what okay. are their training methods? Have you tried? when interacting with your snakes, do you think that snakes recognize their names or their keepers? What are their training techniques that we tried? Do they recognize their names or their keepers? Well, so we kind of already covered the keeper one. They definitely recognize the keepers, 100%. Super chat. Super chat, Woohoo! This is for you. This is the only <laughs> dance you get. No pity from me. Watching with my two-day-old daughter. I'm learning so much about these guys from your videos. Can't wait to get one of your snakes soon. Thank you, Adam Ruiz. You are the man. Um, and I'm, tell your daughter, welcome to the Reach Out Reptiles thing. You're starting her out right. Two days <laughs> old, and she's already on her first live video. So, what's her name? She can come check out this uh, disgusting-looking zombie snake. See how ugly he is? He's so ugly. It what looks like happened a to the last one you called ugly? Of course. We kept that one too. <laughs> uh, beauty's not only skin deep around here. Um, I think they definitely recognize their owners. We see uh, big changes like uh, Rob and I, the, the males during breeding season, they don't like us. Mm -hmm. We go in and pull them off their females and stuff like that. They don't enjoy that. Jazz... Um, you know, Kim, when she's in town, stuff like that, when, when they go pull the males from their cages, the males don't care at all. They're like, Hey, what's up? You want to play? You know what I mean? Or I don't know. Might, maybe might even affections go the other way too far. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so they, they definitely can clearly delineate between keepers. I would say with the voice recognition stuff, the snakes will recognize voices or that you're talking to them or noises and things like that i don't think i've seen anything that that is like first of all i don't think that they can hear as well as we can or at least in the same way that we can i certainly don't think that they can hear well enough to differentiate if i call this guy olaf and i call him hey olaf come here olaf like a dog or something i mean they, they just don't get those like those kind of airborne vibrations the same way. I think it's more like when you hear heavy bass, you could plug your ears all the time and still feel it. So I think that's probably, at least that's the way I imagine them responding. Look at his cool necrosis body color. Doesn't he look like a big bruise? I love it. I don't think that they, I don't think that they can respond well enough to audible commands to get the name thing down, you know? So... Nathan, super chat for you. No one else has texted in. The text is 412-925-1933. If you guys want to text me a super chat, I will put you on this live tonight. Logo, number two. Every time Garrett thinks a snake is ugly, Jess needs to smile on camera rather than dance. <laughs> That's easy. Every time you turn that on her, she's immediately smiling. Look, oh, look at that smile. <laughs> you got a longer than usual one there. Sorry, Jess. I'm going to pay for that one later. <laughs> Oh, let me show you how, should we take a man and just show him like a quick, you know, like as a, as a commercial keeper breeder, we have a lot of stuff going on, but we can kind of show you how we approach and do some quick training. I publicly vote never to see a snake named Stonks. <laughs> <laughs> that? If you ever do, I want a refund with interest from Stephen Lewis. <laughs> Stephen Lewis, Herp Panel Forums. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> that is funny. Dissension in the ranks. Oh, over the stonks name. Let me I'm get you guys. That way. Uh, am I? The you babies? Want me to go that way? Which yeah, one? we can do the babies. I don't know what you're doing. I don't need I don't know what I'm doing either. That makes two of us. <laughs> Let's go, buddy. I almost called them stonks. <laughs> Let's go, stonk. I mean. 
Why is that one open? There's nobody in there. I know what that one is. Okay, so we have some new babies in here. Yeah, you're going to kick some lights on for us. Um, these are the uh, brand new clutch that was done by me and, and those of you guys that know Richard Bilbo's Bloodlines. These are from them. Kalatoa Jamp stuff. This particular one, he's a fresh baby. He's probably going to be defensive about everything. Um, you know, because just like a corn snake or a carpet python or whatever they typically are. So he has this one little dot means he's eaten one time. He's fresh, fresh baby. So, uh, but if he hadn't, I always use a hook to open it. And so there's no heat signature right here where they're coming at the front looking for a warm-blooded prey because you've trained them. Hey, here I come through the rack. I'm going to feed you. And they develop that strong food response. I don't necessarily know that retics have so much stronger food response than other animals. They're just probably more intelligent about knowing exactly when they're going to get fed. And so they, they anticipate things more. The fact that they're doing that just shows you that you're working with a, an intelligent animal. Especially the way that they turn it off immediately once they realize they're not getting fed. So what I would do, I don't know if you can see in here, Jess. If I was coming up in here, we've got a little fresh baby poop. Excuse the cage. Tomorrow's cleaning day. We really you should. say that always <laughs> Well, it always is because it's always Wednesday. We, we, we literally broadcast like the poopiest of all cages. But if you can handle this level of poopiness, you'll be okay with the retake. So when I come in here, this guy's not used to anything. He thinks he's hiding right now. Notice how his vibrant orange and purple colors blend perfectly into his paper bag background. But I'm going to pet him on the head to say, hey, I'm coming here, buddy. And then I'm just going to come in here and lift him up out. And then I'm going to come up from underneath in a non-threatening way and set him on there. Now, let's go ahead and, and we'll just bring him out here. Um, this guy doesn't know what's up. And now I'm taking him through his nice little, away from his nice little environment and out into this exposed environment. I'm talking with my hands all around him. Remember I said I'm not being too careful. Can you see that really rapid tongue flick? He's trying to quickly gather as much information about his environment can't as he can to see, hey, what do I need to do? Do I need to musk this guy? Do I need to pee all over him? Do I need to run? He's very tense. He's in his little arch thing. If I come from up above, that's additional cues that maybe he should be nervous. But if I, and you can see him get nervous when I do it. But if I come from down below and be like, hey, I'm just like a friendly little branch down here for you to climb on. I'm like a little branch made out of monkey flesh. Climb on me. And we just kind of pet him. We, we let him move. If he's moving, he knows that he's not being camouflaged. And the fact is, he's still not getting hurt. So he's like, okay, we're, we're training him to have a nice nice little interaction here. Can you see? He, he's not trusting. This is a fresh baby that he shed like within the past few days. Um, and uh, yeah, he's looking, he's, he's looking around. He's trying to figure it out. And we give him a nice... Eve, easy, even interaction. This is this is gonna be this guy's first training. So you know, I'll come from the top, but did you see how nervous he was when I touched him up by the head and neck? Tensing up a lot more. Might even decide to like give me a a nip on the finger or whatever to try to get me to back off if I'm not careful about it. But this is something that we do with a lot of the new babies. So in contrast. You know, if we just go in there rudely and wake them up, they're not... Come on, buddy. You did very good. Yes, you did. You know, just to, to kind of, like, show you how it could go or something, if you just reach in and you grab them and you're like, I expect my snake to be tame because snakes should all love humans. Look at this. Immediately, you see him opening his mouth. Look at that. See? Now, I very rudely just ran in, pulled him off, he doesn't know what to expect, and he's opening his mouth. He still didn't try to bite me. He's just kind of trying to say, hey, whoa, whoa, I'm a little snake here. I'll defend myself if I have to. Are you a predator? I don't know what you're doing. So you can see if I approach him in a very different way, he'll have a very different reaction. Now remember, these little snakes are like perfect case study for what to do and not to do because they have zero prior programming or experience with humans you know, or at least very, very little, not enough to have formed their own opinion of us yet. But if I can now kind of make up for, for, you know, making the little dude scared and angry, just by petting him, playing with him, 
Try to desensitize them. We'll get them moving again. Come up from underneath and not down from up Oh, I missed below. a super chat. Ooh. Darren Lance. Darren. Super chat dance for you. Not. <laughs> Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Let's check out the maternal incubation. That's a good question. But yeah, so we're going to work with this guy. You can still see the same rapid tongue flicking. Really untrusting movements. Random things falling <laughs> behind me. That was weird. Um, look at him. He's a little king cobra. Hi. And so, you know, even though we spooked him a little bit in the beginning, this is this can still be a very positive experience for him because, you know, nothing bad happened to him. You know, he had one more experience with humans and he was okay. It's all right to be a little bit nervous every now and then because the reality is even if you do your absolute best with your snake to control its environment and not stress it out, eventually something's going to randomly fall off the shelf behind you and spook that animal. And if they are allowed to be scared but not direct that at you or kind of like blame you in their mind, then they can be okay. You can see he's acting much differently. Oh, I touched him on the side of the face than the other guy was, still very untrusting of us. But we're just gonna have a nice positive experience. Now if he bit me and I flung him across the room, that would be a super negative experience to chalk up against interactions with humans. So this is something that we, um, that we work on a lot. You know, it's funny, Richard Bilbo, I don't know if you're watching, was one of our uh, partners, I always joke around that he's Reach Out West. Um, but uh, one of the things that we do here at Reach Out Reptiles, I've got four kids, Hi, buddy. And my eight-year-old daughter, Riley, has done training videos before. You can probably link that up in the description right mm -hmm. for us. So if you guys check back, we'll get you a link to that video where she talks about how she hook trains and everything like that. And um, because her dad is a snake breeder, her version of having a lemonade stand is she charges $10. So if you're buying a snake, like these are albino het snows. The males are, how much do these cost? Do you remember? Come on, we have like two items so far. One of us should know this. This is pretty sad. Yeah, I think you're right. They are 800 bucks for the lavenders, 900 for the for the purples. So, if you were to go get yourself an 800 dwarf, $800 dwarf and super dwarf cross, and you wanted an eight year old girl every day to come down, pet them with the hook, pull them out, have a positive experience with them, put them away, and just give them a little extra TLC, she does that at ten dollars a snake. So there's the sh the shameless plug. The cool thing about what Richard did, he said, I want my snakes, all my bloodlines, to be known as like the tamest, nicest ones ever. And a lot of it, there's certainly nature, but there's also a lot of nurture to that, right? So Richard makes us deduct $10 from the cost of every one of his snakes that he produces, and Riley works with them to train them. Super so chat. If you get one of these, you can, he actually is paying the training fee for you. And it really does work. She has great reviews online and everything <laughs> with the way her snakes go. Super chat. Got uh, 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 Bolter said super uh, uh, chat uh, uh, for uh, Jess. Uh, 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 <laughs> super chat, that means you have to dance. No, it doesn't. Scott, does, doesn't that mean you were super chatting for Jess to dance? No. I'm pretty sure. Scott you can, knows Jess doesn't If you don't dance. want to be on camera, you can text me a video of yourself <laughs> dancing. I'll put it up. Oh, we have a super text chat. You video of you. We have there you go. One from Lucas. Okay, well, well, that was not for Scott. Scott got a little, like... I don't pity you, Scott. No, you already had that one. What? No, no, that's okay. <laughs> Scott got his. This one I'm saving. Whoa, see, you can spook them even when that's you're not trying That's because you're to. trying to make me dance. You can't quite reach me, can you? <laughs> not reacting is a big part of training, by the way. He can see that he can bluff all he wants. But it's okay. It's okay. Yes, you're so very angry. Anyway, I think we might have pushed him a little bit hard. Poor baby. We'll put him back. You're okay. I just want to hold him a little bit more and pet him so that he recognizes, hey, all that striking you did is not why you got put away. Because we don't want to teach you that. No. All your striking did nothing. But I still put you away. <laughs> all right. What did Scott want to do? Uh, Scott wanted to... Oh, we were going to do maternal incubation. Scott, that Scott's was there. Scott's sending you tips. Does so that mean I have to pay up? How much was Scott's? Yes. Five dollars. Theron wanted right. to know. <laughs> you, here you go. He's got to have it. Jessica, five dollars. 
All right, there, and let's go Darren check out this maternal know, And there's a super chat from Lee Varner that says Karampas. Karampas! Oh, super chat for Lee Varner. Hold on, Lee. So I have a super you. chat dance for you. Hold on. Here it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, these are so much better than mine. Look at this guy go. This video is going viral now for that super chat dance alone. <laughs> that was awesome. Very good, guys. Very good, guys. Let's see. You bright think we lights. can carry a light? Ow! Ow, it's bright. How far can it reach? There. Almost. We're almost there. You guys like to leave these not very widespread so they fall down and collapse. All right. So you don't let's trip over them. Yeah, hold on, guys. Hold on. There we go. Uh, that's how we do it. Turn up a break our lights. Thomas will be mad next time he comes out. All right. You guys have to tune in on Friday. We are finally, Theron, finally releasing the Kiowati locality video with an interview with one of the originators of the first captive bred Kiowatis. At least the first truly captive bred ones, maybe not first captive hatched. Here she is. She's doing very well. So we have our, we just added a bunch of Repti chip. You know, normally we keep all our stuff on paper. But this, these guys are wet, and so this cage is, has great humidity. Let's take a look. Oh, we're checking temperature and... Hold on. Ugh, it pooped out. <laughs> these little things are great, and then they're not, and then they poop out. There it goes. All right, so we're even... Oh, hi, honey. <laughs> Theron raised this girl, and I do not have a relationship with her. Theron, I'm sure she wouldn't be trying to strike at you with her eggs. But yeah, we have... so. The cage temp down here, now that I pull it out, is dropping. But humidity was at almost 100%. Let's see if I can put this in without getting bit. You're okay, sweetie. So we've got our humidity up at about 100%. Here's mama, doing great, looking great. She was like perfectly healthy. She didn't lose too much weight laying that clutch. She did a great job wrapping them up. I can see her breathing heavy. She's getting a little nervous. So we'll go ahead and close it up. But uh, yeah, temperature is awesome. It's in the mid 80s up on her shelf. And then uh, the eggs actually create a little bit of their own heat so she can close them in and take them right up to, to you know, the low 90s if she wants or loosen up and drop them down to the mid 80s. So if, you're, if you were doing maternal incubation, I think you would want to give retics anyways that hot shelf of maybe like 85, 84, and they can take it from there. But you can see... 100% humidity in here. We blocked off any excess venting. She can still get vent and, and air through here, but that's her comfy and cozy on those eggs. So, and they're supposed to hatch at the end of March. So there's your update there and she's looking great. So it, I'm really excited and she's a, a het A melanistic and the male was a visual A melanistic, both obviously really small bloodlines. And so these are going to be super cute. I, I just, I can't wait to come in here one day and just see little, you know, like little brown snakes, little white snakes crawling around up there. I'm, I should have done maternal incubation way sooner. <laughs> Do you guys want to see a super cute little tiny, tiny female that's breeding for us? Do you want to see the tiny carampas? Oh, yeah, the tiny carampas. Just, you can wait, Lee. <laughs> he super chatted. He did super chat. He You'll said you would stop everything for a super chat. Okay, that's fair enough. I was going to say, he also did <laughs> buy a Karamba. <laughs> well, he wants to see his, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of film, man. Let's see here. All, all, all shout out. This is a little Girl bit... under the light. A little bit smaller than, than the last retake we had out. Lee, this is your Karamba. He is a looker. Look at this cute baby Karamba, guys. I'll shout out. It's like way thinner than the thickness of my finger. It's like my wedding ring almost. It's like a little pencil. Isn't he cute? Yeah. It was funny. Someone was complaining about, I guess someone posted like their yearling baby next to a pencil. Like, look how small it is. <laughs> but it was one of those jumbo Home Depot yeah. pencils. It's like three times the size. You're like, oh, that's sneaky, you little savvy marketing person. <laughs> But, I mean, these are pretty tiny. Look at that cute little thing. I don't know if I... Let's just show them next to, like... These are not big bloodline. These dwarf super dwarf crosses that we had over here. 
we'll, we'll pull out another one here. Hi. Super chat, two super chats. Okay, so this is a really small purple albino that was actually a twin from that clutch. So, runty, tiny purple, twin, little super dwarf. I'm not trying to get him too close to the grump. I don't want him to bite him on accident. Next Another to a super chat. Next to a tiny little grump. Three super chats behind. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You guys better start texting in some super chat dances. <laughs> So that, that's an exceptionally small hatchling purple male there next to uh, Lee's little Karampa. So I don't know, Lee, is that good enough for you? I think that's pretty stinking amazing. Let's just all sit and look at this Karampa for a moment longer. Can we look at Nathan C's? Because that's what he wants. He super chatted. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's Lila, see. he named her Lila. Lila? Oh, he got a girl Karampa. Yeah. Swanky. He's over here, I think. This guy must be baller. <laughs> He's probably a basketball on this player. Side. Or at least a movie star. Uh-oh, somebody had their first meal today. Look at this, Nathan. All right, so for those of you guys that need further size reference, that big old lump <laughs> in her belly is a fuzzy mouse. <laughs> first meal. There's another baby Karampa. Karampa. If everyone's super chatting just to stare at Karamp Karampas, that's okay with me. Look at that neck pattern. This is so cool. It's like a chain on the front. And then in the middle, it, it almost turns into a normal retic, except there's like twice or three times as many. This one's got there's a lot of hearts. hearts. Look at all the little hearts going down the Karampas. Because so, their saddles are so busy, they come together a lot. And then on the back end, they teardrop down and connect up from the belly a lot. Look at that. So cute. I think this is our best looking Karampa clutch yet. Look at these too. Look at how much of that thick black is around the white rosettes. It's one of my favorite it's traits of Karampas. Heart. You have thin and thick everywhere. Yeah. Pretty cute. Love it. So Lori's Johnson super chat wanted to see her mail, please, if you have time. <laughs> <laughs> Lori Johnson? Yeah. A male Karampa? No. She oh, have a her Karampa, mail... she? Okay. You it's been conf... here because it's been yeah. too cold. You were confusing me, Lori, because we talked about Karampas too. Hey, buddy. I don't have a hook anymore because I'm being lazy. Come check it out. You guys have seen this one on the live before, too, because Lori likes to look at them. So this guy is a year old. It's the 18th. What's what's when's his uh, what's today? What's the tenth? Day? Tenth. This guy's eight days away from a year old, and he's holding this cool clay. So he's getting a lot more gold and yellow, but look at these like smoky black eyes. Isn't that cool? Look at those eyes. What is going on? And then he also has this huge paradox smudge on him. See that? All that black, and that's getting thicker and bigger. It's even, it's even um, coming into his belly pattern now. You can, well, you can just kind of see it. But he didn't have anything on his belly before. But can you see the black on those bands, come, you know, coming across? So he's getting like this huge. I don't know. Pretty cool, cute little dude though. So this this guy is, um, he's a sixty-two and a half percent super dwarf at a year old. Calatoa bloodlines. Isn't he cute? We're repeating this breeding again this year. They turned out awesome. So they're gonna hatch out in March this year. A bunch more, 62 and a half percent or so. If you guys are getting one from that clutch, it'll be platinum, motley, tiger, um, stuff. Stuff. Yeah, stuff, <laughs> Pass that snows. Coming out um, there. Anna Kevlin's super chat was Kiowati video, exclamation. May we see them. The Kiowatis? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love showing off all my pure locality stuff. All right, so here's one. Let's look at the girls. Come check these out. So these are, um, can you see over here? These are all yeah, Doc Murdoch good. line. Come here, baby. These are yearlings. These are Doc Murdoch line Kiowatis, and they were just little brown things when they first hatched, but you could really start to see the gold come in. And then just the that perfect, like, squiggly, zigzag, super gold pattern. You can really see a lot of the Kiowati influence. Can I show you guys a, a misrepresented Superdorf? Would you guys like to see what what can happen? 
when we want to see anything that you show them. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Kiawati number two. So I, I held three of these girls back. This is kind of the end of, a, of an era, at least until these babies grow up. But this one's a lot more gold, much less black. But I don't know. Can you see that? Like barely any silver side spears. The gold's all the way down the belly and everything. So this girl has a ton more really deep, dark, rich color, which, you know, I would say would be great bred into certain projects and things. But given that it's a pure Kiawati female... Super I'll, chat. I'll probably just maintain it. Super chat. <laughs> Look at that. I can play the world's smallest violin behind my back. And it's still not dance. Hi, honey. Whoa. What are you all snarky about? Oh, snarky. He said that was the theme tonight. All right. Snarky. Here it is. This is snarky. <laughs> we better write that one down. The bonus naming. This is the third Kiawati female. So let's contrast one of these to, let's say, like, a Kalatoa, for example. Now, this Kalatoa's still got a lot of gold, too, because it's little. But do you see the heavy speckling and, uh, you know, higher saddle count, big rosettes? And then here we've got just the really rich, clean, kind of buttery gold of the Kiawati. But one of the funny things is, and the Kalatoas have these really big, bright white side rosettes. You see that? And this one's kind of a little bit more muted. But they also have a really heavy, thick, up above and below, upper and lower on these rosettes. The reason why I'm pointing this out, I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and remember, these, these traits like come out more as the animals grow. This is a Kiawati. Now, I have an animal that the mother was a supposed Kalatoa, right? Supposedly a pure Kalatoa, and someone bred a Travis Kubis bloodline known Kalatoa to it, okay? Different breeder, not me. Um, breeder owed me money, and I said all I would want is pure Kalatoas. And so they sent me one of these, and they made a whole clutch of these. It was like a huge clutch too. Kalatoas usually have fairly small clutches. Um, and when she came in, I was like, you know what? This snake just doesn't really look right. And a lot of people say you can't tell the difference when you look at the localities, but you guys are right there. Now that we've done enough of these locality spotlights, you can probably start to see it. I would not ever say, hey, I know that's a such and such locality, but when I think it's not, I'm careful. So a Travis Kubis line, Kalatoa, I can show you this actually, looks like this. We got Midge. You guys remember Midge? This is a Travis Kubis line, Kalatoa. It's older, but it looks a lot like the Kalatoa we just pulled out, right? Even though the other one's not Kubis line. You're in front of the light. Sorry. Okay, Travis Kubis Kalatoa. Okay, this is the bloodline that was bred into this quote-unquote Kalatoa, supposedly of a new, you know, like F1 wild caught. And take a look at the resulting baby, Okay. Looks Kalatoa-esque, but do you guys see what I see? Zigzags coming down. Look at all those zigzags. Lots of gold, much more gold. And oh, look at those heavy black. It's actually a very cool looking animal. Um, and it, it's, uh, you know, I'm sure it is pure super dwarf. But um, see the heavy black in there with the extra big white rosettes of the Kalatoa and the heavy black from what I think is Kiawati. So do you guys see this? This is an animal that was sold to me as a pure Kalatoa. It just doesn't look right. It's got a lot of the kind of broken speckliness of a Kalatoa, but then in there it's got the extra bands of gold, the heavy black around the rosettes, and that kind of zigzagged pattern, the varying thickness on the, the black. So I think, I suspect, this is a Kalatoa Kiawati cross. Now, it came from a wild-caught female that was a super dwarf, so we know it was a super dwarf. But when I get animals look, looking like this, you can be sure that I would never breed this into my pure Kalatoa lines and sell them. And that's kind of where you have to watch out. Now, I'm not saying I 100% know that this animal was misrepresented, whether it was intentionally or just ignorantly or... or you know, I don't know, maybe it's a super weird looking Kalatoa that looks just like a Kiawati, who knows. But what I'm saying is, 
because of the quality standards, like we, we take the pure locality stuff very, very seriously and we don't want to mix stuff. So when I get an animal like that, that I think is mixed, um, I can use her as a pure super dwarf breeder, but I just, I, I won't use her to make more calatoas. You know, she'll be, she's real pretty. I can take a lot of those traits that she has, like that bold black and white, all that extra gold. Maybe we breed her to like a sunfire marble or genetic stripe stuff would be super cool with that kind of vibrance. Um, and a lot of when you see people breeding, like let's say they're all breeding Kalatoas because that's the name that they know, especially if they Google mapped it and they put an extra O in there. Um, that's a little joke for you guys. What's this one? This was Ben Taylor super chats. Another super <laughs> chat. Ben Taylor, here you go. We might have some more. Well, super you already chat did that. You just it. never got to a oh, super for ben chat, Taylor's. and you also got another super chat. So. Oh, okay. Well, he, so he, I'm assuming Ben wants to see his annery. He said, sunfire. "How is the sunfire annery?" She's right here. Take a look. Look at the color up by that tail. Can you see that? Look at the rainbows on that sucker. And they're like all the the annery's cool because it doesn't even it get to come come from the top down because I can see it a ton. And there you go. Can you see it? Like, the cool thing about rainbow, the, the iridescent rainbows on anneries, they barely even reflect the red. Like, there's a tiny bit of red reflection down there, but it's mostly the blues and the greens. So, annery is very cool. It's, I don't think it's that the red that you see in snakes is actually red pigment. I think it's the way to do with the light reflecting, because annery changes them. So, they, they almost should be called, like clear smoke or something like that you know what i mean because they have a translucent look to them it just changes everything it's pretty cool do we get all our super chats are no, you keeping track the next one. Oh my goodness hold on everybody super chat it up we're making more money when i don't dance than when i do <laughs> what does Sprinkle that tell you? For you oh it tells me a lot i told you that nobody wants to see that what's this one that's megan quisenberry she wanted to see oh Megan's. ethan's mail oh you got one of these ones here, I kept up. one of these too. Um, so this is a 50% Kalatoa. This one's kind of cool because this one is 100% uh, from Jason Reed Bloodlines, which you don't see anymore. Jason um, really hasn't bred any of these things in a long time. And uh, he kind of, he quit the majority of his breeding before the Super Dwarf kind of craze took off, which is really too bad because he had a lot of cool stuff. So this is sort of a blast from the past. This is a yearling male annery. 50% Kalatoa. I think it's a cool pattern going on there. Look again with the rainbows on that thing. Ooh-wee. That's a cool animal. You guys see that? Look at that. Nice. It's very nice. 50% Kalatoa. These are, these are staying very small. Mom on these ones was only like eight and a half feet, which is super impressive to me because I have realistic expectations of what super dogs get. I have a 50% Kalatoa that's like an eight and a half foot mom. Most people think they're all going to be six feet anyway. Is that it? Do we have more super chats? Well, we have more questions. More questions? Yeah. Let's hear the questions. All right. Oh, let me make sure we still good. All right, your 10 minute warning. Oh, Megan. Well, we got lots of questions. Holy smokes, you guys just completely took over this, this one with the super chatting. <laughs> <laughs> We still have to name some snakes. Um, Kurt Panel Forums. What are some good resources to educate yourself on retics and super doors besides this channel? Include uh, books, research papers, and other channels or other resources. I'm sorry, there's not a lot. There are some good. Um, this one needs to be snarky. I'm getting a head start. Oh, yeah. Jess wants me to color code more correctly now. Um, so there's a lot of good research papers. Um, let's see, snarky. Let me let me figure out real quick the name. It's uh, the few people that worked together that that actually did some of the studies on these animals in the beginning that ended up ultimately to these dwarfs and super dwarfs being put into their own subspecies, and that's why we call the animals from this island chain dwarf and super dwarf is actually like scientific data studying the islands and all that. Not, not that, like there's probably what would technically be considered a mainland, um, other localities mm -hmm. that might stay a little bit smaller, maybe, but um, nothing quite like these. 
So let me find some of my. Uh, mm, 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 oh no, that's Madagascan leaf nose snakes. I have a whole like bunch of stuff in here. Jump a uh, review of the reticulated python. All right, so let's see. A U L I A M M is his first name. This is the one you want. Review of the reticulated python. This is the dude that was involved in pretty much all of the studies that um, talk about these guys, um, and they are finding the new subspecies, which considered consisted of the dwarf and super dwarf. I'm sure all this stuff is copyrighted, so I'm not going to show it all to you. But this is kind of cool. Here's Sulawesi Island. And then here's this tiny island chain down here. You can see it pointing to Slayer. And then here's the line. And then there's Jampea below it. And that you can find right here. So this is actually a pictorial reference of a lot of the different localities. There's the island chain. We show it like constantly on this channel. But I'm pretty proud of it. And people are constantly asking questions about it. It's nice to throw it up on the room of your wall you can go to reachoutreptiles.com and buy that thing but that paper right there is um that's the granddaddy one that's the one that started it all there are other resources out there you just you have to kind of take stuff with a grain of salt um because this is all stuff that we're still discovering you really shouldn't take anything as like biblical truth at this point when it comes to dwarf and super dwarf retics um you know, technically, I, I think they're mostly, you know, other than we've got the Malaya Python reticulatus jampeanus, which is the Jampea Island, and then Saputriae, which are the Salayers. Those guys have been named, but a lot of these other ones, Tombalongans, Kiowatis, Karampa, Kalatoa, Madu, they have been studied, um, and there are scientific papers you can find out there, but they've, they've, all of them have kind of ended saying, inconclusive, we need more data. So... They're really like if you're buying a carampa, you're most likely getting an animal that's not yet named. You know, you're you're probably gonna end up with an animal that has a different scientific name by the time they sit down and actually look at them, if there's enough left for them to do that. So should be pretty cool. Um two questions left. Okay. One Chris Gear says, How is Stonks doing? <laughs> Do you want to check out if there's any more Super Chat dances on my phone? I like this. Oh, I have it. That okay, what's the second one? Chat. This there's is no from, song. Yeah, this is from... So I don't know what you're talking about, Chris. <laughs> Community questions. Okay. Uh, Amurda says, I need to know, hybrids, has anyone ever bred a Super Dwarf to a Carpet Python? We see bat eaters. We see it in Super Balls and Blood Balls. Kevin at Nerd was even trying to hybridize a boa and anaconda. We, we could ask this question a lot. There's mm -hmm. a lot of like hybrid questions on stuff. Says, Kevin is they be hybridized? talking right now about doing the boa conda, but that's been done before. Um, so, do, 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 do. Um, Anna's got another super chat. Anna, no super chat dance for you, but thank <laughs> you for your support. Is making sure that Superdorf blood is on the mom side in crosses. I don't think that's a complete question. Is making sure that super dwarf blood is on the mom side in crosses. Oh, is it a rule? No, it's not a rule. You could technically breed a pure super dwarf male to a, a pure mainland female and call the babies 50% super dwarf. So that works. Um, but it doesn't necessarily make them really small. Uh, in super my experience, it Natalia. makes them quite large. Natalia, what's up? I have this one for you because you only sent me one doggy dance. What's the, <laughs> what's the super, super chat? She said, "Would you consider adding ROR doggy swag? Banana would be nice." <laughs> <laughs> we do have like little kids' clothes going all the way down to like six months, and I may or may not have dressed my toy poodle in Reach Out Reptile swag before. <laughs> so if you know the approximate human age size of your dog then yeah we have doggy swag it's already on reachoutreptiles.com go check it out um okay so what was i talking about before that i lost track the we're gonna hybrids. go next. 
Oh, the hybrids, yeah. So a lot of those have been done. The only hybrids that have ever been done with retics, it, not counting just dwarf and super dwarfs, are a uh, reticulated python to a Burmese python and a reticulated python to a Timor python. Now, the Timor cross was done with a super dwarf. They used, they used a Karampa, and that was really sad because at the time they were hybrid, hybridizing, I'm not against hybrids per se, but everyone was like, oh, a Karampa retic can breed to a Timor? Cool. Let's get Karampas and hybridize them out. And so a lot of the keepers globally are trying to get Karampas to hybridize them with Timors. I don't think it's anything special about Karampas that made that cross, guys. If anything, you're just making Karampas extinct by grabbing these wild-caught ones, pulling them out of that breeding population in the wild, and crossing them out to a completely different species. Like I said, I'm not against hybridizing the Timors, but those would technically be Superdorf hybrids, um, and that breeding was done in uh, over in Indonesia. And there are a couple of people who, even though you know a lot of them are like, oh, don't make crosses, they're, they're actually hybridizing stuff or attempting to in the United States. There's a few other breeders that are working on that. Again, I'm not against hybridization. Timor pythons are still in the genus Malaya python, so, like, I don't know. It, hybrids, everyone has a different opinion of every different one. I don't think the Timor crosses look that good. They're too close to retics. They're, like, kind of all right, but they're not as cool as Timors, and they're not as cool as retics, so why do it? Um, the retic berms, uh, that's a much further spread and uh, I know Sal Valeda did some where he had a um, he had a 50% super dwarf was one of the parents of his cross. So they'd be like 25% super dwarf fat eaters. I think it'd be cool to take a, a pure one and run it like everyone's like, oh, get a dwarf Burmese and a super dwarf retake and breed them together. The problem is dwarf Burmese, like they haven't been bred in captivity in years. They're exceedingly rare. That's pure prog shy. Um, it would be a shame to cross one out. And then the super dwarf and dwarf localities, just like we were talking about the Kiowatis, like, oh, I don't, I'll probably never cross one because this is a female. So unless you had a female like the one that I showed that was probably a cross of localities that it's a mutt anyway, I don't think that would hurt. You could run something like a prog shy to them. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Carpet pythons are pretty close. Um, I think it could happen. Hybrid projects are hard. Lots of people have tried with multiple animals for decades and never got it. So if you're, you know, this is not really an answer to your question, but I see these questions often asked by someone who has one carpet python, and then they're thinking, maybe I'll get one super dwarf retic and breed them together, and that would be cool. It's hard enough just to make the super dwarfs <laughs> or the carpet pythons. Making the hybrids is a, is a whole other long shot. I think everything has to go exactly right for it to happen. But could it happen? I think so. I have uh, one more question from Laura that okay. I forgot. Um, she's asking about snake breeding. She has a friend that wants to invest in her snake breeding, and she wasn't sure how to present a business plan, knowing that she wants to work with Tomalong and pure selectively bred morphs and cow combos. Um, that That's a tricky... Well, there's a lot of different ways you could invest. I think what you're going to want to do is come up she like you said a friend with friend that wants to invest in her so she needs to come up with a business plan how should she go about that i think you need to figure out what is in it for your friend and what you can offer her and then show her that with the business plan so like if you're saying hey look if you give me x amount of money back to buy an animal then we can split proceeds from the babies long term uh you could just take it as a personal loan you could have, I don't know if that person wants to have the snakes at their place or not, but you could do breeding loan scenarios. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. You know, one way you could get started is by buying whole clutches. I've done this in the past where I've, I've picked up whole clutches of like really nice animals. When someone has like an awesome clutch, I'm like, hey, listen, I really want to pick the best one out. Everyone thinks I'm crazy, but the, the truth is I do this a lot. I'll buy the whole clutch, and I'll say, I have one rule, you sell to no one else, I'll buy all the animals at your asking price, but I want the whole clutch, and I buy the whole clutch, I pick out my two or three favorites, and then I resell the rest, and, and a lot of times you can, you know, make enough money reselling them that the animals you initially got for free, it's just a huge amount of money out front, um, but you end up with the best bloodlines that way, and if it didn't work, I don't think you would see all the cool animals in there that you see, so... 
There's a lot of different ways to do it. Laura, you know me. Just hit me up. I'll help you work on something. You're going to have to come up with something like what does she want out of it, he or she? What do you want out of it? Um, and kind of sit down and work that out. All right, guys, you guys ready? Get your naming hats on. We already have Snarky for tonight, but we're going to name another male and another female, and if you say Stomps, your vote doesn't count. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> Coming. All right, Snarky. Uh, it kind of looks like Sharky the way I drew, wrote it. Makes me think she has a shark bite or deformed face. Who are we naming? Uh, I don't know. Let's pick someone out. Let's pick someone out. Did we get the names on last week? Envy. Wasn't that one last week? I have to go back and watch last week's live. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's do... All right. So here's a fun one. Um, we have... Let me grab my hook. We had a pure Jampea female, and I know I just talked about, like, don't breed those females, but it was John Cashman's fault. He did it. And to be fair to John, we didn't have any males available anyway of the pure Jamps. They were very hard to come, come by. Of course, now we have Tarzan, and he was, whoops, sorry. He was the father of, so, of the pure Jampeas that we did, but the mother of the pure Jampeas the year before produced this beautiful girl and a few people have these out here out there there's a lot of people who talked about putting orange glow and caramel into dwarves and super dwarves i think we're the only ones that pulled it off so far and it was two years ago so what's the lesson i don't know talk is cheap so this is a two-year-old female yeah a little over two years old and she's a motley 100 percent double head caramel annery she's my hold back out of the clutch Picked her because she had the most jampy looking colors and features, even though she's a motley. So she should be able to make orange glows and orange glow snows. Lori Johnson says Jasmine. Jasmine. That's a good one. I like this. Look, she's super thick at her head. I always hold the girls with all the freckles. Look at all those freckles on that head. <laughs> Maybe I'm super biased and, and narcissistic. So I had, tend to have a lot of freckles, but I love the freckles. So we've got to vote for Jasmine. Anybody else? What should we name this girl? Two-year-old, jamp female, which, by the way, those, those of you guys that were asking about me using mainland females, if you had bred a, a jamp male to a mainland female, I don't think your two-year-olds would be this big. This is our personal holdback two-year-old from a nice, small jamp female. We've got Stonegate. We've got Pamela Anderson. Stonegate. We've got Snickerdoodle. Sunday. What do you look like? Carmelo, another Stonegate, Ivy, another Pamela Anderson, Spotly, Freckles. Spotly. <laughs> another one for Freckles. Sheena, Diamond, Daphne. Freckles means her name must be Annie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Gucci, Ibu, Ibu. I think I'm going to go Eve. for Spotly. I like Spotly. Another one for Pamela Anderson. She's got spots and she's a Motley. Get it? <laughs> Spotly. I don't know why. I just thought, hey, that's cool. Is this the green tape for naming her? Yes. Okay, Spotly it is. Who won? We'll send you, you a You always make me scroll back. They have to email us. You have to have email us. Email us. We'll send Info you a picture. At reach out reptiles because otherwise we don't know who you are. So if you've ever won one of these email us and say, hey, I named Spotly or whoever it was, and we will email you a picture of the snake that you named, send you a little thank you. I think that's a cool way to do it. But Spotly it is. I like that. Okay, we need to pick a boy. Here we go. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, man. Should we give him, like, a chance at, like, the Holy Grail? We name the boy. This has to be a good one. So we have... The very, we should probably check if they're cutting. We might go long. Here, come up, bring over here. So, careful, there's rats in there. And you're not supposed to show almost anything that's back here. Here we go, look how ugly these look. Check it out. Guys, these are the first Madu eggs. Look at those tiny things uh, in a very long time. And they're looking very ugly, but it's because they're gonna hatch any day. Come out, come out, come out. Don't they look like the little Karampas that were cutting in the live two weeks ago? So, the Madus have been all but lost in captivity. 
um, there's almost no natural habitat left on Madu Island, according to whatever we can tell. And so I've been working very hard to get some of the last remaining pure locality animals together. Um, and this guy's in here. because he You got another super chat. This guy might have, uh, he might have an ugly face right now. Come here, buddy. Um, oh, cause he's been breeding and stuff. We got a super chat. What's our super chat? Super chat. It was. That's for you. <laughs> Duran. What's up, Duran? He said he's mailing two strongly worded letters. One to you saying stonks and the other one to the politicians proposing all these bans. <laughs> Yes, I like that. The, dude, the politicians and the bands are ridiculous right now. Crazy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, join US Arc. If you haven't joined US Arc, what's your deal? Okay, got to join US Arc, guys. Everyone needs to, to help the reptile community. Um, so he's deep in blue. This is a captive bred Madu, but this is the last time they were bred. And really, there were only a couple clutches of these. So this guy is, um, he's either a head annery or a visual Lucky. annery. And he's got nice wide back strap here. And he's soon to be the father of, you know, what could be the last Madus. Do you guys remember the video of my pure Madu female getting egg bound? Well, she's okay. She's still alive. I've got her and then I've got like an old as dirt ancient Madu female that's actually wild caught. These are the last three Madus that I can possibly get my hands on. Trust me, I'm trying. I will keep trying because... This is one of my favorite localities. They're obviously very small. I mean, this guy's like 10 years old, right? And he's been getting fed a lot because he's been getting bred a lot. But pure Madu male, he, he might be the last Madu male. I don't know. Um, there might be some like garage find Madus out there, but. We've got Lepke, Calm, Bapik, Jameson, Mars, Zigzag, Merlin, Manly, Mortimer, Bilbo. Manly? Is that what it was? Manly? Yeah. You, who said manly? I, I'm Lepke him. means little one in Yiddish. That's Hawkeye, cool. Johnny the Mad Hatter, King Arthur, Thunder, Backstrap, Sidious. I, I'm kind of like a manly. You got a few <laughs> seconds to beat it. I don't know why. I'm sorry if you're having a hard time trying to predict names that I'll like, so I'll pick one of them. That was Lori Johnson. I don't think there's any way you can predict it, but I'm like, this is the Holy Grail. <laughs> Here, he needs an absolutely name that is worthy of the last Madu. Manly, right? Manly. He's pretty manly. He's thick and stubby looking. Do we have any more? When Serpent says, can I email a super chat dance? Yes. Email it. Info I guess so. at Reach Out Reptiles. Info I mean, you guess so. Reptiles.com. It's probably going to have, have to be next week. I think we're out of time. Yeah, we're late. Lori, we're going manly. Go manly on you, Lori. Uh, so for those of you guys that are on our Patreon, jump on Discord. Uh, we're going to start that live right now, and we will talk to all of you guys about more fun stuff. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. We'll catch you next time.